So, but you want okay, to... Let, let, all right, it's very straightforward. It's clicojudicialmanager.bb at deloitte.com. That sounds like a mouthful. <laughs> clicojudicialmanager.bb at deloitte.com. But it will go out in an email. Right, and that you have policyholders who are not only EFPA policyholders or not just EFTA policy you have other policy holders, the ones with the life insurance policies, the ones who pay in their pensions and so on, and they are concerned about the future direction and viability of CLECO. And, and therefore, if you do not hear something, and you can give them a deadline, a reasonable deadline, then you have been calling off those policy holders from stopping paying their premiums from coming in to surrender their policies and they, you can no longer do that unless it would be irre, as a matter of fact, it would be irresponsible of you as a group to advise policyholders to continue paying their money into an insurance company, an insolvent insurance company that no one has determined or has taken a decision as to what the future direction of that company would be. That would be totally irresponsible because what it would mean is that you're taking your money and showing it into a black hole. And therefore, I'm saying you can use that reality as leverage because that judicial manager will not want to hear that people stop paying their policies. They will not want to hear that at all because that the cash flow that the company will see. And that will further exacerbate a, an already bad situation. Now, what, what I'm saying to you all, don't take that action just yet use it as a weapon because if you use it you lose your leverage you follow me when we met with the judicial manager he was very keen and this is one of his headline notes and i'm talking about oliver jordan and patrick swapping that the contributions remain current otherwise you're in a breach of contract situation we are not going to be responsible but we what we ought to do and this is quite right we ought to exploit this that the power that we have and the authority we have by the sheer volume of our numbers will remove this constant source of revenue should we choose to exercise. So that is a strategy that we ought to adopt, but it would be irresponsible of me to advise this young lady to stop paying her premiums now until she finds an alternative, and I'm not encouraging her to do that because I'm not a salesman for anybody at all, but she has options that she can exercise in terms of life insurance providers just like when we get car insurance and we get fed up with ICBL or whoever or CGI, we go to the other provider. So keep in, at this point in time, keep your contributions current for life insurance and think about an alternate provider. But bear in mind the advice that we've received that this is leverage. And again, this is something that we ought to put to the judicial manager. And Mr. Pano said a number of things about and I'm sorry, I'm going to take this opportunity just to get some of the tick boxes off out of my head. The website is incredibly important. We need your information. And I'll tell you why we need some of the information. Some of you were sold policies after the prohibition was announced. Yeah. We need the date when you were sold those policies. Yeah. We need to get that data so that we build up our files, build up the type of claim that we are going to service. We want to cloud, we want to chalk the courts with the lawsuits. We really do. We want to make life miserable, not only for the judiciary, but for the politicians who are going to be held accountable. So please, all the information that you can provide, put it on the website. It's absolutely critical that you do that. No. March 30th, sorry. We collected $4,750. So we've collected so far $5,410. That does not include persons who paid it tonight and persons who I know have brought money. We are asking you for a $200 contribution per annum to cover a number of expenses. Mr. Maloney, I'm, I'm sure what Peter is going to do is, is for the in a minute, with the PA system, we have to rent the hall here. And as you saw, you still have a cost of money, um, and, and even though we get some discounts, we're going to submit new financial statements so that you can see exactly what the money is being spent on. When we get that approval from the Minister of Finance, and I said when, we will open a bank account. We've not been able to do that as yet because we need to get the, the approval so that we have our name officially as an unincorporated association. 
and we will open a bank account which will be under at least two signatories and of course we will be able to disburse, disburse funds appropriately. But we want to make sure that you understand that we are managing an organization here and therefore it will involve some expenses. Um, so we've collected $5,410 so far. We've actually physically spent $1,175. Um, but we have another $3,214 in bills that we have to pay. For example, the public liability insurance is $450. The rental of the auditorium, including today, is $375. The rental of the TN system is $100. Um, we had to pay for Peter to come up from Trinidad. We didn't get that free. Um, you'll hear what we got free because, believe me, June is very, very good at begging. And um, that's what so we, we are trying to beg for everything we can. Um, we had to pay a deposit on the website that was paid by one of the DDCP members of $1,200. The website is being done for us at a cost of $2,500, and that is a discounted rate based on all that we're going to get in here. That includes our membership database. All of you that have signed up up until the last meeting are on the database. Your name, and so on and so on and so forth, so you can go in and you can actually access the information, and those that signed up today will go on. So managing that database is going to be a full-time job, and we are hoping that we can tell that we can grow these numbers significantly. Um, so, we've collected $5,410, we've actually spent $1,175, we have cash in hand of $4,235, and expenses to be paid, uh, to be reimbursed to some of us who paid it, of $3,214. That is just a, a quick summary of what we've done so far, but you will be getting a financial update from here on in. Alright? Get your money back. Well, apart from that, you don't want this to happen again. Because if you do not know what caused this in the first place, what is to stop this from happening again? Anybody can tell me? What guarantees do you all have that this cannot repeat itself in another financial institution? Be it another insurance company, be it another, a bank. What? Because it's the same people are regulating all of these financial institutions. I, I checked with June. Nobody, I am, I mean, I, I, I'm not that surprised because in Trinidad, as he says, that's another similarity. Could you believe no one has lost their job? Nobody has been sent home? Yeah. Nobody. Nobody. So, so, so like, it, like this never happened. Yeah. Nobody was fired. Nobody was jailed. Nobody, well, we have reached jail yet, but at least <laughs> there's a whole different story. Nobody was sent home. Five billion dollars disappear. And, and everybody passing themselves in the back, we did a good job, it, it could have been more. <laughs> so that, so that the, the point is, we need to find out what went on, if only to prevent it from happening again. This is not something you could sweep under the carpet and say, well, this is a bad like, chop this up to experience, Dupre is the problem, and you know, he's a nice scapegoat, we can blame Dupre, we can vilify him. Yes, he will, ha he will he will have his day in court. But the point is, we need to find out who was involved, who were the players, who were not who were sleeping on the job or looking the other way. And I want to bring this quickly to your attention. You will recall in Antigua, there was another fellow called is it Stanford or something like that? Yeah. The regulator signing off on the, on the every year. Yeah. And the next thing we heard is the, the U.S. State Department had him in, had him in handcuffs carted him off to, to, to the U.S. and then he, you know what happened, he turned state witness now. He was now given evidence against the very Stanford because obviously you know there's pre-bargaining and all of that up there. So they obviously they, they put the squeeze on him and they say, yeah, fella, you make it some big time, you know. You see that orange jumpsuit? That you, uh, that, that you look good in that color, you know. So that, so that, so that, that is what, that is what went on there. So if it could happen in Antigua, Come on. So we are saying, you're, um, and I'm urging, I hope you are taking notes, you know, June. Make sure and press these guys, you want to find out what went on. Because you are not comfortable with putting your money right now in any institution. Minister of Finance, the current Minister of Finance, Mr. Winston Dugrand, has failed to produce the audited financial statements for Clico. Now this is two years, two plus years after the company failed, because remember they failed in, in 2009, January. We are in what, May? 2011, that's more than two years, that's almost two and a half years. And to date, we have not seen 
the audited financial statements, neither the policy holders nor the country. Now that is totally unacceptable and we have told them so in no uncertain terms. Now one of the things we are hoping to do is by, and, and somebody mentioned that we have matters before the court, we have actually filed lawsuits, is via those lawsuits to, to get the court to order them to produce those financial statements. And that is, that is some, certainly something that you all can do, and I'm sure you, your, your attorney will, will advise you accordingly. If they don't want to give it to you voluntarily, um, you can force them, compel them via the courts to give it to you. That is, a, that is a must. Now, the thing about it is, another difference, and another significant difference with the Kiko Barbados in Trinidad is that apart from the... Sorry, Kiko... Trinidad has some very valuable assets. Some of those valuable assets are, there's a Methanol Holdings Company, I'm sure you've heard of it, Methanol Holdings Trinidad and Tobago Limited. That is, wow, it's, I think it's the last value I saw is almost $5 billion. There's also Republic Bank. Tico owns something like 53% of the shareholding of Republic Bank, which is probably another $4.4 billion. Republic Bank is a very profitable company. They have a subsidiary, as you know, in Barbados. Is it Bank of... RBTT. No, no, Bank of Barbados. Barbados National Bank. BNB. Barbados National Bank, yes. That's a subsidiary of Republic Bank, um, Trinidad and Tobago. So that Republic Bank is a very, very lucrative uh, and profitable uh, uh, asset that Clico owns. Every year they declare millions of dollars. This year, actually, they, they declared at, at, the, at, the, um, at the, 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 the end of the, sorry, yes, the, huh, the end of the, yes, the, the, the year, the financial year runs to September, so the half year would have been March. They declared something like half a billion dollars in dividends. Now, this is money that is going to go, 53% uh, of that is going to go to Kiko. So that, uh, and those are just two assets I'm, I'm, I'm naming there. There, there there's, if, if any of you have been to Trinidad, they, they, Clico owns Long Circular Mall, they own Trin City, they, Trin City Mall, they own uh, uh, Valpa Shopping Plaza, they own Home Construction Limited, that is number one Woodbrook Place, I don't know if you have ever been to Trinidad, there is a massive construction going on, that's just out, outside of Port of Spain, in the St. James, just outside of the St. James area, between Woodbrook and St. James. These and, and I can go on for the rest of the evening to the payment asset. So the point I'm making is, it is not as if Kiko does not have real assets. It is not as if those real assets can be sold to pay the policy holders. So that I don't know what the situation is with Kiko Barbados in terms of your, the assets. That is something you need to find out. And as I said, you're going to find that out when you get those audited financial statements. Winding up is the worst thing that they would want to happen right now. Trust me, they cannot afford politically or tactically to deal with such an application in the court. And it's something that we ought to really seriously consider. So I know I've gone beyond your issue of conflict of interest, but all those things play into it. And particularly, in my view, the misselling of policies after the prohibition all go to the conduct of Clico in Barbados. And just one thing that the gentleman brought up earlier about who the entity is that ought to be sued. At this point in time, it's Clico Barbados. We ought not to get sidetracked about Clico Financial in Trinidad. As Mr. Parnell said, this is a separate entity. The government has said it's a separate entity. At the time when Trinidad had, had its difficulties, the government said, don't worry about Clico in Barbados. That's separate. Yeah. That's fine. That's robust and that's all. So at this point in time, our action is focused against Clico in Barbados. The message that must go out is that you all are in this together. You all will sink or swim together. One is not going to swim and the other one is going to sink. Everybody will either sink or everybody will swim if you all work together as a group. The, the most important thing is you need to find out, and I'm glad to hear that your attorney has written asking for that information. That is critical. You must give the judicial management manager some time to get his information together. He cannot do that tomorrow morning because he has to identify assets. That was a problem in Trinidad and Tobago. 
because these assets are all over the place. They are hidden. In some cases, you have to, the, the, the forensic audit, as a matter of fact, I'll give you an example. There were some assets in uh, an offshore company in um, Cayman, Cayman Islands, offshore. And what they do is, the money it moves from one company to this company, and then it splits up into two other companies, and then it splits up another four, and then it comes back to the same company. So, so, so this is not this is not an easy exercise. You, and it, and Deloitte is, is a good uh, is a good firm. I'm sure they have the expertise to trace the assets. You need to find out where those assets are. You need to value those assets properly. So you have to give them a reasonable amount of time, not an indefinite amount of time. So I think it's 90 days they asked for, 90 days, when that 90 days is up, you don't want to hear any excuses, you want to see what is the financial status and you're using your leverage of the numbers you would have amassed by then, because if today you have this, by that, in the next, how many days to reach your 90 days, this, this, this crowd must have quadrupled, you must have real numbers, those things must be coming in on, on that website, you must have a database, that's what we have in Trinidad, we have a database of all the policy holders, how to contact them, um, their, their, their email addresses and all of that. And therefore, when we need to communicate, we send a block email, everybody gets hit at the same time. We also have a website, so you can visit the website to find out up-to-date information what is going What's on. What's the link? Sorry? What's the link? Uh, clicopolicyholders.com uh, Clico, Clicopolicyholders.com, yes. yes. www.clicopolicyholders.com So that...